Hi, welcome back to History and Philosophy of Science and Medicine. I'm Matt Brown. Today we're talking about Imre Lakatos and his philosophy of mathematics. Imre Lakatos was born in Hungary in 1922, and he immigrated to the United Kingdom in 1956. He led a somewhat ignoble career in Hungary um, as a communist, first student, then uh, intellectual, and um, as a Stalinist kind of revolutionary. His disillusionment with Stalinism came just a few years before the failed uprising against the Stalinist regime in Hungary and the subsequent crackdown by the Soviet Union. Um, and, and after that, he fled, he fled Hungary. He completed his PhD in the philosophy of mathematics in 1959 at the University of Cambridge. Um, and within 10 years, he had risen to a, a professorship and a major reputation in the fields of philosophy of mathematics and philosophy of science. Unfortunately, Lakatos died of a heart attack in 1974 when he was still relatively young um, and kind of at the height of his philosophical career. Now, Lakatos encountered Karl Popper's work already when he was in Hungary, sometime around 1953, uh, before 1956, for sure. Um, and this seems to be one of the things that led, uh, that led him to cut ties with Stalinism um, and develop a, a different kind of philosophical view. He, be he became a colleague, actually, of Popper's at the London School of Economics in 1960. Um, and he saw a lot of his work as extending and improving upon Popper's ideas. So there's, there's a lot of relationships there. Um, now, Karl Popper was notoriously uh, difficult as a person, um, as, a, as a sort of intellectual colleague. And so um, Lakatos's desire for um, improvement of Popper's ideas uh, ultimately led to a kind of breakdown of their relationship in some respects. Lakatos was also very good friends with Paul Feyerabend, uh, another apostate Popperian, if you will. Now, Feyerabend's most well-known work against method, um, which we've talked about before, was originally actually conceived as part of, as the first part of a collaboration between Feyerabend and Lakatos, where Feyerabend would launch his attack on method, on rationalism, uh, and then Lakatos would re restate and defend a, a sort of fallibilistic, uh, critical form of rationalism, um, uh, a kind of pro-method position. Unfortunately, Lakatos died before he could write his response, and so all we, all we got was Feyerabend's attack. Although you can pick up on some of the ideas from lecture notes and, and the correspondence between Lakatos and Feyerabend, which is collected in, um, in this book for, for and against method. I wanna talk a little bit before we get into Lakatos's philosophy of mathematics about the other idea in philosophy of science he's most well known for, which is his methodology of scientific research programs, which I think we can see is an attempt to kind of take the best ideas from Popper, uh, as well as ideas from Kuhn and Feyerabend and synthesize them into a somewhat more moderate or, or rationalistic view. Um, so it's, it's important to think of this as a kind of modification of falsificationism, right? So according to Lakatos, the, the right unit of, an, of analysis for thinking about science is not the theory, but what he calls a research program. And a research program, kind of like a paradigm, um, has a kind of central set of commitments. Lakatos called this the hard core of the, of the research program. Um, and it had what Lakatos called a protective belt, a set of less central assumptions, less central um, commitments that uh, uh, could be modified over time. Um, but Lakatos recognized, along with Kuhn and Feyerabend, that every theory, every hypothesis uh, is sort of born in a, with a set of anomalies, right? Um, that it couldn't really address. And rather than treat these as automatic falsifiers, um, Lakatos, in, Lakatos articulated a view in which the research program could be 
relatively tolerant of anomalies um, as long as it was sort of attempting to address them over time. Um, so there's a kind of version of Kuhnian normal science here in which what the research program does is sort of modify the ideas, uh, the theoretical commitments, the postulates, the methods in the protective belt in order to accommodate anomalies and uh, increase sort of empirical content. Um, now, another aspect of um, the methodology of scientific research programs is comparative, right? So you might have multiple research programs going on at once um, and uh, might be competing with each other under certain conditions. This is sort of more like Feyerabend's pluralism. Um, in a way, for Lakatos, there are activities like normal science and like scientific revolutions going on simultaneously uh, most of the time. Now, a research program could be um, could be what Lakatos called um, degenerating or progressing, right? A degenerating program is one that is um, making sort of ad hoc changes to accommodate anomalies, but not increasing its sort of predictiveness, its fruitfulness, its, its uh, sort of scope over time. Um, and, uh, a, or a research program could be progressing. That means that it is, it is, it is growing. It is, it is covering more phenomena that were not previously explained. It is making modifications in response to anomalies, but those modifications increase rather than sort of decrease the predict the novel predictive content of the theory or the research program. And if one even more well-established um, research program was degenerating, was sort of decreasing in content, was making all these ad hoc changes, and another research program was progressing, it was growing, it was improving, it was expanding its empirical content, it was making more novel predictions, um, then it would be rational, according to Lakatos, to sort of jump from one research program to another. And in, in this way, um, you, can, you can see, I hope, how Lakatos kind of tried to capture the best of both worlds with Popper and Kuhn. On the one hand, the notions of degenerating and progressing sort of replace the sort of naive picture of falsification, um, but they still capture the idea that if all you're doing uh, to um, is changing your theories so that um, it sort of turns re refutations into or, or conflicting instances, anomalous instances into um, supports for your theory without making new, any new predictions, new risky predictions, um, that was still bad, right? So the, the role of risky novel prediction is preserved, but also the Kuhnian, Feyerabendian insight that every, uh, every theory is born in a sea of anomalies um, is, is also captured. Right. And Lakatos uh, argued that this was both a better um, descriptive account of what scientists are actually doing and was was an uh, entirely rational way to proceed. Um, now, that's not what you read about for today, but I think it's important to know that he's sort of developing this, this sophisticated theory of science um, that he sort of presents as inspired by Popper or based in Popper or is an improvement on Popper. But what we want to really focus on today is Lakatos's philosophy of mathematics um, and um, the work uh, that Lakatos titled Proofs and Refutations um, in a kind of direct um, uh, reference to Popper's own conjectures and refutations, right? Um, so what, what, is I think most central for Lakatos's philosophy of mathematics is that he was opposed to formalism, what he called formalism. Um, he preferred what he called a quasi-empirical approach to mathematical knowledge, which we'll talk about in a moment. But I think most centrally, Lakatos was um, critical of sort of views about the nature of mathematics and mathematical knowledge 
um, that that focused on it as a as a purely formal system. There are a number of reasons for this, um, some of which we uh, see unfolding in the reading, but um, I think one of the core ones is uh, for Lakatos, understanding mathematics in a purely formal way means that there's no way to understand the growth of mathematical knowledge, the discovery of mathematical knowledge. In other words, it totally separates the philosophy of mathematics from the history of mathematics. Um, on the other hand, Lakatos thought that that was real, where the really interesting action was in under, sort of understanding what math is and how we create knowledge in mathematics. Now, formalism for Lakatos is a particularly broad notion. It includes what is more narrowly referred to as formalism, um, which is the idea that math consists of kind of arbitrary symbols and rules for manipulating those symbols. Um, formalism on this narrow conception is a kind of purely syntactical um, system with no, no built-in meaning or interpretation other than the relationship between the symbols. And, and doing mathematics is kind of like playing a game, right? Um, uh, playing a particularly abstract game. Another view that Lakatos encompassed with his term formalism uh, is uh, what's what we call logicism, right? This is the idea that mathematics ultimately can be reduced to formal logic, that we can use the machinery of formal logic um, uh, to sort of derive all of the truths of mathematics. Um, so here again, basically, um, Mathematics is characterized as a formal deductive system. Um, and then another view, uh, which is known as intuitionism, is also encompassed here under uh, Lakatos's critical scrutiny. Um, intu intuitionism is the idea that mathematics is basically a kind of mental construction. There's a sort of um, mathematical inquiry is basically a process of constructing ac abstract objects in our mind. Um, and what we do when we, we posit axioms and make proofs and do all that is, um, is a constructive activity, not discovering something outside of ourselves. Right? In all of these views, the kind of prototype um, uh, of, of formalism, Lakatos's broad notion of formalism, is Euclidean geometry, right? So you may remember from, from geometry class that Euclidean geometry basically proceeds by positing certain axioms and then deducing theorems through formal proof. That's sort of the nature of, um, of mathematical knowledge. Now, um, how does that work? Okay, so you start with axioms. These are, these are posits. These come from, uh, well, it's, it's actually not clear where they come from. Um, but you start with, with axioms about which you're certain, and then you uh, engage in deductive proofs based on those axioms and some proof rules, and you derive theorems, right? Um, and uh, whatever truth and meaning that exist in this system uh, derives from the axiom. So any particular theorem, maybe it's a theorem about the relationship between angles and um, sides on a triangle um, uh, it's, it's going to be true because the axioms are true and the meaning of the of the any concept derivative concepts in those theorems is derived from the meanings uh, inherent in the axioms right so these are these are what um, what Lakatos in one place refers to as Euclidean systems um, uh, these kind of formal deductive systems Lakatos wants to contrast this uh, with a different way of thinking about mathematics in which your, your sort of broad general um, statements are not so much axioms as conjectures, right? A, a variety of, of, um, of conjectured or hypothesized um, uh, sort of general formal laws, right? There's still a place for proof, right? The proof helps us derive, um, uh, sort of deductive proof helps us derive more basic statements from those conjectures, but the form of proof may not be um, uh, as so much a straightforward deduction as more like a thought experiment, right? Now on this account, on, on Lakatosh's account here, um, truth doesn't so much derive 
in this downward direction as it goes uh, up from the basic statements to the conjectures, right? But we know, right, uh, that when we're talking about a deductive system, um, uh, sort of basic, you, you can't quite transmit truth that way from the particular to the general. Um, that's the problem of induction when we're talking about empirical science. And it sort of applies here too. But what you can transfer, this is the point that Popper made his career on in a way, you can transfer falsity in that direction, right? If you derive a basic statement which you know to be false, then what you have is a kind of refutation of the conjecture, right? Um, and so you can, you can transfer um, falsity in that direction. This is what characterizes what Lakatos calls quasi-empirical systems. Um, and, and crucially, Lakatos thinks this is really where the development of mathematical knowledge is. He uses in Proofs and Refutation the form of a dialogue between a teacher and students to demonstrate this sort of, uh, the sort of way that this quasi-empirical inquiry is supposed to work, right? Part of the criticism uh, that Lakatos is engaged in when he's thinking about the, the idea of formalism is that it's not clear from where the axioms derive their authority. That's sort of the core problem with formalism for Lakatos. And, and it makes sense in historical context because um, you know, take, take Euclid's geometry, right? The parallel postulate in Euclid's geometry was always a source of some concern, right? The parallel postulate seems like a little too, um, a little too uncertain to be the basis of uh, of the system, right? And many tried to, to derive the fifth postulate, the parallel postulate, from other postulate, the other four postulates, right? The other four axioms. Um, it turns out you can't do it, and the revolution of non-Euclidean geometries that took place in the modern period um, uh, was a, a kind of real driver for the sort of thought in philosophy of mathematics that, um, that Lakatos is responding to. Now, Lakatos did think there was a place for, for, for Euclidean systems in mathematics, um, and, and, but largely it was so, something that took over once the um, the sort of inquiry into in the quasi empirical realm ha was done right so there's a kind of process of formalization when sort of the unrefuted conjectures and their proofs had been settled on where you would kind of turn mathematical knowledge into a formalized system um, and there's a kind of like activity like normal science in a way for lack of touch which you might call normal normal mathematics right. Um, uh, where there is some puzzle solving in a Euclidean framework, some attempt to clean up and make more secure the proofs for various theorems. But by that point, according to Lakatos, um, the kind of significant work of the math, the sort of significant creative work of the mathematician had already been done. And the real sort of locus of uh, knowledge creation was here in the quasi empirical systems. So that's a quick introduction to Lakatos's philosophy of mathematics. I look forward to talking in detail with you about Lakatos's criticisms of formalism and the dialogue he presents in Proofs and Refutations. Um, and I, I look forward to hearing your questions. Uh, you, can you can leave a comment or write onto the Discord, or uh, I will see you in class. Um, uh, otherwise, I will see you next time.